Life at Chila Vista took on a strong monastic flavor right from the get-go. I guess this is where I should admit that all I know about the community was from my father's letters. Sure, there is the information on their website, but that's just self-serving propaganda generated to drum up new recruits. They do make it sound attractive, I'll give them that. A peaceful agrarian society high in the mountains of Mexico where the members practice meditation and discuss a philosophical medley of Gurdjieffian neo-gnosticism and some kind of ancient astronaut poopery I thought had gone the way of the mood ring and drum solos. Try as I might, I've never been able to figure out what triggered Dad's transformation from a suburban CPA Rotarian to a New Age goofball with Mercury rising. However, I've never been at a loss in understanding why Mom divorced him. His once analytical outlook on life, as sturdy as an actuarial table, gave way to a slippery world of ectoplasm and astral bodies. His first letter arrived when I started graduate school. I was pretty busy and didn't get around to reading it for several days. How's it going, sport? You'd never believe how clean the air is here. It's like you can see forever. They've got me working at the cheese factory. It's positively rustic. I'll tell you, milking goats takes a real knack. It took a while but I got it down solid. There's a little valley just over the hill with a sacred grove and you can just barely make out the stone foundation of a pre-Columbian temple. The grove is located at one of those points of conjunction between this world and another manifestation. A higher vibration of the cosmic apparatus. Some of the others here can actually see that vibration. I think I'm beginning to pick up a glimmer now and again. This is all very exciting. I'm, at times, frustrated because, as a neophyte, there seems to be very little I can do to contribute to the community. I am, however, proud of my financing of the ozone rejuvenation pods. Love to you and your mother. Perhaps I should have consulted a lawyer, maybe tracked down Dad, accompanied by a professional deprogrammer. But really, he's a grown man. None of my business. Although, I became a bit more concerned when the second letter arrived. It came just the day after I got around to reading the first letter. A vibratory fold of the seventh manifestation has surrounded this region of the mountains. I wonder, will this letter reach you? The sun never sets. It perches stationary in the sky, surrounded by a ring of lavender clouds. Not a day goes by without half a dozen saucers landing or departing.
The goats keep getting smaller. They are now no larger than a toothbrush. Soon they'll be gone altogether, or at least too small to see without a microscope. Yesterday, my roommate, who has the bunk beneath me, revealed himself as one of the great ascended masters. But I suspected that from the beginning. It's been rumored that the sun will begin its descent into the eastern horizon, and those who don't make it into the caves further up the mountains before nightfall will be left behind on this, the third manifestation. It sounded so ominous, like some sort of eschological suicide cult. I shrugged it off. Just a pathetic cry for help. Screw him. I had my own life to live. During the holidays, my cousin Vicky stopped by for a visit. Hey, what are these? Hmm? Nothing. Just some letters from my father. He's living in some new age commune in Mexico. No, he's not. I saw him the other day. He's the night manager at Food King. But those postmarks? Those stamps? You haven't even opened these. Sure I have. Well, the first two. I probably should just throw them away. Can I have them? Sure. Enjoy. Merry Christmas. Vicky left and her letters from Dad stopped coming. Two months later, a letter arrived from Vicky. It was postmarked Cielo Vista in Mexico. This is amazing. I'm at ground zero, where the ancient past intersects with the distant future. Try to imagine crop circles in the shadows of Mayan pyramids. It's like in a movie, but the food is really yuck and the toilets are always backed up. There are people here from all over the world. Burbank, Scottsdale, and an old couple from Hyannisport. I think we're on to something big.